Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. For this video I have a few homemade gift ideas. The first gift idea is a world map where the recipient can fill in all the countries they've visited. This is perfect for someone who loves to travel. I actually traced mine off a scratch-off map from Urban Outfitters, but over the years the color underneath comes off as well whenever I try to scratch off the top layer, so that's not really ideal. Plus, personally, I like a more minimal and simple look to my decor. I used baking paper to trace the lines, but honestly it did not work at all, so if you have some sort of tracing paper or even a projector that would work a lot better. This does take a long time, and I've probably made a lot of mistakes, like this country I drew in between Germany and France that doesn't exist. I drew all the lines with a Micron fine liner, and the paper I'm using is made from cotton, and is the same that I used for the giant painting from my last video. Depending on the amount of detail you put into it, and whether or not you want the name of every country on there as well, it will take you a couple of hours. I chose to keep mine completely simple. I can take it anymore. I don't want to remember. Just want to let it all go. Waiting for a new day. When I will feel no pain. You will have to let me go. So I can be. This whole project is really simple, but a bit time consuming. And if you like the idea, but you're not very crafty, you could definitely just buy one of those scratch off maps and frame it yourself. For the frame, I found these wooden dowels that had magnets on the inside, so you clip one pair to the top and one pair to the bottom of the paper. They are 70 centimeters long, so quite a wide wall hanging. After clipping these onto my painting, I screwed in two of these hooks, about 20 centimeters in from each end, and tied a short piece of string to each of them. The second idea is pretty simple, it's a knitted headband. If you want to learn how to knit completely from scratch, I'll leave a link down below, but here I'll just explain it pretty briefly. I'll have the recipe on my website as well. Start by casting on about 25. For this particular pattern, you want multiples of 4 plus 1. For the first row, you knit 2, purl 1, and then knit 3. From there, it's just purl 1, knit 3, purl 1, knit 3. On the second row, you'll want to start by purling one, and then from there, knit three, purl one, and repeat. These two rows are repeated until the band is the length you want it to be when it starts splitting off into two. For mine, it was about 22 centimeters, since my headband had to be about 55 centimeters long in total, and the twisted part takes up about 10 centimeters. I start the split by transferring half the stitches to another pin. Then I just continue the pattern with half the amount of stitches. When they are about 10 centimeters long, you can lay one over the other and transfer the stitches back onto one needle again. Now just keep knitting with the combined rows and knit the same pattern again until the other side is as long as the first portion of the headband. To finish off your last row, every time you knit one stitch, you pull the previous one over on the right needle. For the last stitch, just pull the yarn through and cut it long enough that you can use this to sew together the two ends of the headband. I do this with a large plastic needle and just weave the yarn through in places where I think it looks good. I'm sure there are ways to crochet or knit this together even more nicely, but I don't really mind how this looks. The last loose ends you can just sew in between the stitches and cut off when secure. And that's it! Again, you could simplify this project by not twisting the front or choosing an easier pattern in general. The last idea I have is this cute corduroy tote bag with an embroidery patch on the front. So half a meter of this yellow corduroy fabric cost me about $10 and there's actually enough for two totes if you don't make them too large. First I cut off a strip for the straps, which was about 15 centimeters wide 
and then the rest made up my tote of about 40 by 37 centimeters. I wanted there to be a seam in both sides, so I cut it in half, which gave me two identical pieces. Now, this part is completely optional, but I decided to line my tote so it had a bit more structure and didn't stretch too much because of the corduroy. I cut it just a centimeter smaller on each side so that it would fit inside the bag without bunching up. After sewing the bottom and sides of the lining, I stitched across the corners like this to give the tote a bit of shape. I repeated this for the corduroy fabric so I had two open sacks with a raw seam at the top. I guess you should not work with corduroy while wearing corduroy. <laughs> This is where you want to start making your straps, as we want to sew them in between the fabric and the lining. I cut my strips from before in half, the long way, so I had two strips that were about 7.5 centimeters wide. To make the straps, I folded them right sides together and stitched all the way down, creating a tube. Then I used a clothing pin to feed the fabric through itself and turned the whole thing inside out, effectively putting the right side of the fabric on the outside of the strap. I decided to top stitch along the edges of the strap, which you don't have to do, but I thought it would look good. Instead, they just got kinda wonky, but we're gonna ignore that. I wanted to customize it a little since this is a present for someone in my family, so I used the same fabric as the lining and stitched a simple design of a sun slash moon, as well as the initials of the person I'm giving it to. I just used regular black embroidery thread and an embroidery hoop. I attached this little patch to the front of the corduroy tote by folding in all the edges and top stitching it down. Now I can assemble everything. Firstly, I pin down my straps pointing down because I'm gonna be sewing everything right sides together. Then I place the lining on the outside, wrong side out, and pin the top to the top of the corduroy and the straps. Is this over? Is this over? I make sure that there's a little hole in the bottom of the lining that I can pull everything through to make it right sides out after I stitched it. I sew slowly along the top with a regular straight stitch, and as you can see when I flip it inside out, everything looks really clean. The last step is top stitching along the top to keep the fabrics from slipping and to get a more precise edge. And that is my corduroy tote bag finished. There are lots of things you can do to keep this project more simple, like not lining it or leaving out the embroidered patch. But overall, I think this idea is really cute and useful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got some inspiration for presents to give your family and friends. If you have any questions or ideas, please leave a comment down below. I read every single one. See you in my next video. Bye! Uh -huh. Smoke spirals off your cigarette. Uh -huh. Door slam to figure